Yokai army is now ready for a war declaration. Finally, I want to close this episode off, but at least I want to do one battle beforehand because you know I want to at least know what the fuck we're doing first. Okay, let's fucking do this shit. So event, attack. They got ten units. They got. I'm not. Wait, what? I'm not. Oh, oh, I, oh. Okay. 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 Let's do that first. Negotiating character. Do I have? Who's an insult? I have no idea how to do this. It says neg requires negotiating character. Negative five. Who has that shit? I don't see it. Oh, there you go. So Raymond Marissa would be the perfect candidate. So let's go with Marissa. Is that fine? Let's see how this turns out. Hey, Rigo, we're in trouble. What's the big deal? You look like someone was shooting at you with a slingshot. That shrine made from a shrine has done this war declaration thingy on us. Eh? All of Rigo's army started an uproar at the news. There were even those who wanted to launch a first strike on Reimu in revenge. And I was so begging on declaring to claim war first, then striking quickly in the confusion and beating them up then. What are we supposed to do now? Our foolproof plans completely destroyed. Our bird brain and a bug brain could never make anything foolproof, but there wasn't anyone to tell them that. That is true. I would say shit. But I cannot. So yeah, kind of screwed on them. Ugh, there's no nothing else we can do. We'll still have to attack the shrine sooner or later. If we panic now, we'll fall into this trap of theirs. Yeah, all right, everyone, let's get ready for battle. Yeah, yokai generally went along with the mood easily, which meant that they get fired up easily, and also get depressed from defeat easily. But Rigo could think about no more than getting revenge on Reimu. All right, let's do this. Save. Attack. Oh, I used Marissa to trigger the battle. Shit. Fuck, I think. Oh, that's too much, is it? Fuck. Am I? You know what? Oh, I'm kind of worried, though. The fuck did I do? Did I fuck up somewhere? Oh shit. Oh shit me, shit me. Can't do anything really, right? Okay, I am so confused. Once again, Rigo and Mystia gather to discuss just how to take down the aud 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 audious, audacious, no, odious Hawkery Shrine Maiden. Hey, I just thought of something. Yeah, maybe we should try to recruit a few more allies. Eh? Are you saying the friends I called aren't good enough for you? That's not what I mean. It's just that you know, having more allies is always a good thing, don't you think? That's kind of true, but I don't have many yokais I can call over. Hmm. While battles would no doubt be easier with more yokai to participate, it would be unreasonable to assume that everyone would want to join. The yokai army had now reached a difficult point. You can't really plead those who aren't impressed into joining, huh? Maybe there are some bored yokai forced to join in. We shouldn't use force. If they listen to my song, that's essentially the same. So mean! 
To be perfectly honest, neither of those two, those two were truly smart enough to have a worthwhile discussion. In the end, they wasted time without deciding on anything until... Hmm, hey, what did, we, did, you, did you just do? I didn't do anything! Something was destructing the sun's ray, casting, casting a shadow on the ground nearby. It unnaturally moved slowly towards them, still surrounded by shadows. Brightness. A look upon revealed a similar disc-shaped shadow. Is that one of those unidentified flying object thingies? Missia took to the skies and tried to get closer to the shadow. She looked at it from the right side, from the right beside it, realizing that it was a pretty sphere of black rather than a disc, but she couldn't see it within it at all. Hey, be careful. Getting too close might be dangerous. Yeah, I'll be careful. She timidly extended her hand and disappeared into the shadows. Her hand met no resistance as it went in, but she couldn't see it anymore. She pulled her hand back and it looked and it looked the same as ever. Wow, this is really weird. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine, see? Mista pushed her hand out in and out of the darkness several times. Gradually going deeper and deeper until the point where her elbow was hidden. Then her finger hit something. Yeah! She hurriedly pulled her arm out. There was nothing at her fingertips, but the sensation of touching something remained. What's wrong? There's something inside! But nobody could see what it was from the outside. The black sphere then stopped its slow movement. Huh? Missia was on her guard when she suddenly heard an in inquiring voice. Boo! You've all been so loud for a while now. What? It spoke! Who touched me just now? Boo! I don't want to make it all bright. But as she spoke, the sphere of darkness weakened slightly. It eventually weakened enough to see inside, revealing the figure floating at the center of the sphere. Eh? Who are you? You're the one who interrupted me floating around. Yeah, it felt so good too. Um, you're a yokai? Yeah! My name's Rumia. So, what do you want? Do I have to press? Okay, so I have to press. Kind of weird. We could have just transitioned normally. Even if I was slow, it still should have done something. That felt a lot longer than it should be. Whatever. Rumia slowly floated downwards into the ground. It was still a bit hard to see through the darkness surrounding her, but not hard enough to be worth complaining about. Well, I'm Regal, and she's Mistia. We were just investigating why it turned dark all of a sudden, and why a giant cloud of darkness was flying around. Ah, oh, is that so? Don't worry, I just make it dark so that the sun doesn't make me feel warm. I really don't feel like doing anything while it, when it's hot. What were you doing inside that darkness then? I wasn't doing anything. I could, couldn't see anything since it was so dark, so I just floated around and around. Her reply seemed a little strange, but Riggle's feelers were tingling with excitement. Are you free? Well, I'm sort of busy with being free, kinda. Riggle's eyes began to twinkle. Do you want to play with us, then? Hey, wait! Play with what? A war game. A war game? Against two? Mostly humans. Can I eat them? Uh, probably not. Boo. Come on, you're not doing anything anyway. Yeah, I said that way. anyway. So help us out. We really need your power. Need. Rumia didn't understand why exactly her power was necessary, but she at least knew someone was requesting her help for something, which made her feel a little proud. Hmm, I guess it's fine then. Alright, thanks. Let's work well together from now on. They exchanged handshakes, leaving Mistia sighing in their wake. Jeez, you're leaving me out of the decisions again? Aw, oh, come on! Anyway, Rumia, this is a bit quick, but let's see your powers at work. This afternoon, sun is really too strong? Okay. Wow, so dark. And so cooling. Most of could prefer the night over broad daylight. The darkness Rumia generated made the area a resting place for these yokai. 
Thus, the three of them forgot their orig original objective and relaxed in the darkness.